Hello, my name is Mike Jones and in this video I'm going to install Sonar Cube on Azure Virtual Machines using Azure Automation Accounts and Desired State Configuration. And the reason I wanted to do this uh, is to experiment with uh, Azure Automation to create scripts that I can use for repeatable uh, deployments and I also wanted a Sonar Cube test environment that I can use to experiment and learn more about Sonar Cube. So what is Sonar Cube? It's a open source tool for evaluating the quality of your source code. It's looking for patterns that it calls uh, the seven uh, deadly sins. And it has a database of uh, thousands of rules for different programming languages to detect quality issues within your code. Each issue that it finds is given a set time that it would normally take to fix that issue and it can then calculate uh, your technical debt in the number of days that it would take uh, to clean up all of your code and actually turn it into some good quality code. So it can also create uh, some nice dashboards uh, and pretty pictures of all of those metrics for you. So if you haven't used uh, Sonar Q before, I recommend you go and check it out. I think it's a really useful tool for tracking your technical debt um, and this is, a, this is what I'd like to set up on an Azure virtual machine. So let's get started with the two minute getting started guide. But before we do, there's a prerequisite that uh, Java JRE 8 is pre-installed on the machine. Warning, uh, manual steps coming up. If you're squeamish, uh, please look away now. So I need to find the Java Standard Edition. Now I need to go to Downloads. And I want the JRE. And now I need to figure out exactly which one of these I need to download and use the Java installer to manually unpack and install the JRE onto my virtual machine. Which is far too much hard work, so we'll use the Chocolatey Package Manager to automate the Java installation. The Chocolatey Package Manager can be installed with one line of PowerShell and once installed, the Java SE runtime can be installed with one command line. But we can even automate the installation of Chocolatey with PowerShell Desired State Configuration. So let's make a start. I'm going to the Azure portal and Automation Accounts and add a new Automation Account. Give it a name and a new resource group and we'll select no to this run as account option because it just creates extra run books that we don't need and we'll click create to create the automation account. Hooray! We've got an Azure automation account and as you can see there's nothing in here at the moment. Uh, we'll click on DSC configuration and there's no configurations. I've launched PowerShell and I've started a configuration called Sonar Cube and you'll see on line number nine that there are three import DSC resource lines. The first one is for the PowerShell desired state configuration itself and the second one on line number 10 is to import the C Choco module. On line number 15, I'm using the C Choco installer resource in the C Choco module to install Chocolatey. And that just needs the installer where I want that installed on the local virtual machine. And on line number 20, I'm using the C Choco package installer to install the Java JRE8 package and of course that depends on the Choco installer having installed Chocolatey already. So this configuration will automate the installation of Java JRE8. 
So that's covered off our prerequisites and we can now go back to the getting started guide and actually start looking at installing Sonar Cube itself. The first line says download and unzip the Sonar Cube distribution into a particular folder, which is actually like three steps in one. But uh, we can automate that through PowerShell Desire State configuration as well. Let me just change the display so that you can see all of this script. So on line 26, after installing the Java JRE, the next thing to do is to ensure that the install path is present on the local VM. That's the install path that we want to install Sonar Cube, which I've defined in line number four to default to C colon backslash sonar cube. The next step on line 33 is to download sonar cube. Now I'm using the X remote file resource, which is in the experimental PowerShell Desired State configuration module. So I've had to add in line number 11 to import this resource from the experimental PowerShell Desired State configuration module. Back down on line 36, I'm giving it the URI to download, and that's a archive hosted on the Sonar Cube server. And the archive file name is uh, a parameter, it's on line number 7, which is Sonar Cube hyphen, and then the version number that I want, dot zip. And the version number can be passed in on line number 5 and that will make up the complete uh, URI that I want to download on line 36 and I give it the destination path where I want it to install to and all of this will depend upon that directory existing in the first place. The next step is to unzip Sonar Cube and I give it the path of that zip file and the destination where I want to unzip the file in this case it's the, uh, the same install path and of course it depends on having downloaded that zip file. Now I've added an extra step in this configuration to set up the Sonar Cube Home environment variable on the uh, Windows operating system and it wasn't in the getting started guide but I did find reference to it in the troubleshooting so I've added this step in to ensure that the Sonar Cube underscore home environment uh, exists and that its value is uh, the install directory where Sonar Cube has been unzipped to. So this configuration will now install uh, Java JRE 8 and uh, download and unzip the Sonar uh, distribution. I've saved this file as sonarcube.ps1. Jumping back to the Azure portal and we can now add a desired state configuration. And when you click this you'll see that it opens the import uh, blade which is a bit inconsistent but we'll click and import our sonarcube.ps1 uh, file. And we'll OK. Yay! We've got one desired state configuration in Azure. Now the next step if you've uh, played with desired state configuration on local infrastructure is to compile the configuration into a MOF uh, file that will get sent to the nodes. But that's going to fail in Azure because uh, the assets uh, shows that we do not have the PowerShell desired state configuration module installed in the automation account by default. So we'll go to Browse Gallery and import the PowerShell Desired State Configuration module. It will take a few seconds, but we only need to do this once. Click OK. OK, this will take a few seconds to unpack.
Okay, good. So next thing I need to do is to add the chocolatey uh, module to my automation account. And OK again. OK, so now I'll close that down. Open up our configuration. And now we can compile and keep those defaults and click OK. And it started a job in the queue. Now if we hadn't imported those uh, modules this would have given us an error, but it looks OK now. And that is all of the hard part done. Now we just need to assign a uh, virtual machine to this configuration. Now I'm going to use a dev test lab uh, as your virtual machine uh, just because I like the automatic startup and shutdown uh, options you get with dev test lab uh, VMs, but this will work equally well with a regular VM as well. I'm using a clean new virtual machine using the Windows Server 2012 R2 data center base and I'll connect to this VM just to show you that there's nothing on it and it is a clean image. I'll go to File Explorer and I'll open up the C drive and you'll see there is no folder on here called Sonar Cube, which is where I'm going to install the Sonar Cube packages. I will also show you the um, system environment variables to show you that there is not a Sonar Cube home environment variable on this machine at the moment. Let's go back to Azure Automation account. So now the virtual machine is online and ready. I can go to DSC nodes and add Azure Virtual Machine and select the virtual machine to onboard. And it's uh, the server 01, this one, it's okay. And now I need to configure the node to use the sonar cube.deploy configuration. And uh, reboot if needed, checked. And that's OK. Okay, so it's picked it up, it's now in progress. And that says it's compliant, which is good. Now it says it's not compliant. Why is, why is that? Refresh. Oh, first one compliant and then it says not compliant. Okay, it's uh, done everything apart from, oh the environment is not compliant and the chocolate installer. That's a bit uh, odd because it's done the package but it says the installer is not compliant. Let's log in and take a look.
So let's check uh, the hard drive. Well, there's a Sonar Cube folder, which is good. And it has, it has done it. It has uh, unzipped it. Yeah, there's all the files. Let's check the uh, system environment variables. And oh, we've got a chocolatey uh, variable. And we have, we have got a Sonar Cube environment variable. Okay. Well, that is a bit odd. Let's close this down. Try refresh. No, still, uh, still not happy. Okay. Um, I'm going to try a, a reboot of the virtual machine and uh, see if that helps. Okay, I've rebooted the uh, VM. Let's go back and check. Uh, compliant. And let's just, yep, compliant. Oh, good. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so it does work. Okay, well, I'm going to leave this running for a bit longer. Well, I've left it for a while and uh, it's all coming back compliant now, so that's good. And uh, this seems like a good time to take a break. Uh, we've completed the first step of the getting started, uh, which is uh, installing Sonocube. And the next step is to get that started and to ensure that uh, service is, all, is always running. I think that'll be a good one for a second video. I hope to make about uh, one video each month. Um, this video has taken quite a long time to put together with all the uh, dubbing and uh, pre and post editing. In fact, I've noticed that um, they've actually changed the interface in the Azure portal between now and when I first started this video. So uh, the second video will perhaps look a, a little different, but I'll put a link to all of the resources that I've used uh, in the description below. If you found this video interesting, please give a like and if you really liked it, please uh, leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching.